The last time I watched a series that involved cute girls in a warlike setting, I enjoyed it for its upbeat story and for its entertaining characters. That was Girls in Panzer. Saga of Tanya the Evil is not a beat. But man, is it entertaining! What I knew about this show going in was that it involved a young girl, one who is a super genius for her age and is moving up in the ranks in a German-like military during World War II. Also, I knew that there is magic in this world and that she is quite adept at it. So, I figured that we were going to have some story about her trying to protect her country from the enemy. You know, typical stuff. Magic flair, because there needs to be something to spice it up. But man, does this show go in an entirely different direction. If all you watch is the first episode, even then you can get a hint for how many fucks Tanya does not give. She may be young, but she is in command and will do whatever it takes to defeat her enemies as quickly as possible, even if that involves sacrificing the troops under her command, though usually she only does that when they piss her off. Tanya seems to have some kind of patriotic loyalty or religious zealotism to her, but we have yet to see the reasoning behind her motivation. We also have yet to see the reason why a girl her age has the abilities that she does. If the show does not explain these things soon, my interest will disappear. Then episode 2 starts. Spoilers, by the by. Episode 2 begins in Japan in what looks to be present day. A Japanese businessman begins narrating his boring and cold views on the world, how he plans to get his ass promoted to the good life while following the rules because doing so is easy, and then he dies. Or rather, he gets murdered by a fellow employee he fired. Fired for legitimate reasons, even though he was a stone-cold ass about it. Either way, in the last moments before his death, he gets a meeting with God. But this entity wants an explanation for why it should reincarnate him when he does not believe in God. Then there's some philosophical talk for a bit. The businessman does not plan to start believing even on the edge of death. So the God decides to reincarnate him anyway, though into a body and a world where he may become destitute enough to finally place his faith in God. Thus, the Japanese businessman is reborn as Tanya, and Tanya is not pleased. What this series has become is not some story about a young girl protecting her home from invaders. Instead, it's about a pissed off Japanese businessman and his quest to stick it to the man. In this case, the man being the one or the being that placed him in these circumstances. All Tanya wants to do now is place herself in a life that is comfortable and free from any chance of death. But because God wills it, she gets put into circumstances that are ever increasingly dangerous. This will most likely continue until Tanya finally caves and believes in God, though she is a stubborn one. The show is a heavy contrast from other series because despite its setting, it decides to go off and do its own thing. So comparing it to the last series I watched with magic in an alternate version of World War II, this is quite a bit darker. Zed of the Last Witch was a series about hope and perseverance. Also, romances that went nowhere and plots that crashed and burned during the second half. No, I am not bitter. Tanya is about a quest for revenge against a god that our main character refuses to acknowledge, even given all the events that keep happening around her to make her think otherwise. The entertainment comes from watching the unfortunate events occur to this awful person. Like, Tanya is a truly, truly awful human being. She was cold and distant in her previous life, at least as far as we saw, but she has become a, a vengeful and vindicative killer, and I love it! Now, as with any series, though, there is the chance for things to go hits up. Going back to Azetta from last season for a moment, I loved the shit out of the premise and the characters, but that love only lasted until about halfway through the show, and then everything took a trip downhill. Here, though, we would need to go heavily off the rails to suffer the same fate. Not saying it couldn't happen, but it's a little less likely. In the end, the series has to answer the question of if Tanya will cave and start believing in this god, and if she does, what finally drives her to do so? If she doesn't, how does she survive or overcome her circumstances? How the story goes about explaining all of this will be key to how much I recommend the show once it ends. Until then, I expect a wild ride, and as such, give my recommendation to watch the series as it 
airs. If you can only watch a few shows this season, I would hope that this is one that you have a look at. It's worth it for now. If you are interested enough, you can go over on Crunchyroll and watch it if you happen to have access to that website. Link in the description for a Crunchyroll free trial as usual, should you require it. And what did you guys think of the saga of Tanya, the evil? Let me know down in the watch of a jig, and for those of you who are further along in the show or have read the original material, no spoilers, please. Thank you for joining me on this first reaction. If you like this sort of thing, hit the like button to let me know. And until next time, ladies, gentlemen, and others, stay frosty.